Welcome back to Stoneblock, and uh, I'm just grabbing a stack of ender pearls, which stack up to 64 instead of 16. Okay, never mind, that's a new change. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to grab some ender pearls. I started off with a uh, coke oven and a crude blast furnace, and you'll see that's already starting to make coal coke. Uh, so that will let us make steel. I just need to put a... well, I just need to put an item duct in between the two. And a servo. Have it those on me, so I'll do that off camera. So I move things around now that we have the water mills, and I move those to make a little bit more power. Uh, if you move them to the diagonals, ah, like <laughs> like this, you'll see that there is water flowing around all of them. So that lets me let me turn off this. Uh, let me turn off the uh, the fans, and we can actually get to them. There we go. So you'll see here water flowing around all four sides. Generate 16 power, but says effective power is just under 15, 7% efficiency loss. That's fine. I just put this stone but block here just to be able to stick the ender tether back down again to make sure ender men weren't moving around. So, yeah, we can extend this out to make larger uh, setups in the future if we need to. However, I'm just going to solve wireless power to get started with. Now, underneath here and at the back of here, I've put those two of those little spectre core, uh, spectre, whatever they're called, spectre. Um, wait for the computer to catch up. Uh, Spectre coils, yeah, and they are adding power to our battery. However, we can make it wireless because there's another mod in here called Flux, not one I've used before, but uh, well, let's give it a go. So there's Flux plug for adding network, uh, adding energy to the Flux network, and Flux point for removing energy from the uh, flux network and then a flux controller so we're going to need all of those and to get them we actually need to burn or make flux which is just burning redstone essentially in our smeltery so i went ahead and made some of that um that may be enough for one of these items but not necessarily both uh and that's why i need to just get also get some uh, blaze powder oops wrong thing there we go uh, I also changed the flying ring over, by the way, to the from the angel ring to the flying ring. You just add eight lava mills to it, for instance, uh, in an unshaped recipe. And we had eight lava mills, so that worked just fine. And this now no longer consumes the GP from the extra utilities, but we still have flying. I do also have some dark boots on, but uh, they uh, are just a smaller replacement. So, uh, eyes are ender first of all, then. Uh, I'm not going to convert all of them, but uh, let's just make, I don't know... Um, 14, let's make a quarter stack. There we go. So we've got some eyes of ender. Let's start off by making the flux plug. So we need flux blocks. Flux blocks are made with flux and flux cores. Flux cores, well, here we are. So let's start off with uh, 32 of these. Well, 36. Let's see how far that gets us. And then we need to make that flux plug, don't we? So uh, we just need the flux block which is made from those. Okay. And we can craft that. That would be really helpful if it let, let me craft, move the items in. There we go. So uh, this, hopefully we should let, let it, or hopefully it'll let us attach to the top of the battery. There we go. Got a bit of a pause, not quite sure why, but it is actually physically connected now. And uh, that is fine. So um, let's create a network then. Uh, but there is already one created. So let's just call it, um, I don't know, create a new network. Main power. Uh, hmm. Let's just call it battery power for now. That is fine. Access settings is fine. Don't care about anything else. Create that. And there we go. So it's nice and blue now. <laughs> Doesn't really much matter what color we go. And then we're also going to want a controller with that. So uh, that's going to need five more of these blocks. We're going to have for two. So we're going to need to basically burn more redstone. And uh, that should let us go. So two. And that's going to require quite a few bits and pieces, isn't it? We've got 20 of these left. So hopefully not too many more. Okay. So. We want three, which means I'm going to need, what is that my short of? Just the redstone stuff. Okay. 
That should be enough. There we go, we've got five. And need two more for the block. Just gonna take the redstone out. Flux controller. Okay, put that on top. And uh, select the network, let's select the battery power network, and then uh, we're going to add those, which should hopefully start recharging things uh, wirelessly now. So let's give that a go. I'm going to need something that wirelessly recharges. Let's go for the teleportation wand. Um, no, I'm going to need to configure the sides, maybe, of this. Hmm, one second. I need to go and check. There we go, all working. So all I had to do is go into the controller, make sure I clicked wireless charging enabled, and then in the battery, select up, and uh, that will then start it working. And it's now charged you, so let's put you away. And is there anything else we can charge? I guess a protection wand, and it's already charging. Cool. So I don't need this anymore. As well, I need the anvil, sorry. I don't need the battery as far as its internal slot anymore. As soon as I run past, it will start recharging stuff, which means if we've got stuff in Tinkers, then uh, if that is energy based, like a laser pistol or something, then that will use up our energy. And uh, it's fine because we have uh, energy more should be building from the, uh, the blocks at the back. Although that's not... Well, it is actually, yeah, it's just taking a little bit of time to, to bring, to come back. So, yeah, that is that sorted. So we've got some wireless power. So it's been a couple of real life days since I recorded the first part of this episode. And uh, I just restarted the server just to start myself back up again. And start recording, that is. And um, we've got a few visitors. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Aside from this system, which I'm going to replace with Ender, I got I all conduits. We've got fluid cows, our friendly, usually a sky block sort of creatures. They'll spawn around because this is in the area I've got with grass, of course. So they will occasionally uh, spawn until we've got some. So if we want to capture a dense oil cow, we can do. <laughs> or indeed, molten platinum or sap. Or we've got energetic sheep over here, which gives RF, I think, from their wool. A rooster. And molten iridium. That actually might be a good one to just capture. There we go. So we cow. And to make sure it's the right. Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to have any problems with uh, losing its fluid if we pick them up. So that is just fine. Not necessarily. We may want the. Let's just take the dense oil cow as well, just in case. But uh, yeah, we'll just leave them alone. And of course, if you do pick them up, remember other ones may spawn on grass. So if you don't want to do that, you're going to have to figure out some way of stopping them spawning. There are things like those various uh, torches, it's like a mega torch or something like that. Mega torch. Something like that. Uh, mega torch. Prevent natural spawning of hostile monsters. Okay, so that's not sp stopping the spawning of non hostile monsters, which is why I've got. Our friendly evolved Enderman in the base. Yeah. Thankfully, they don't group up. They do make an annoying noise, but they don't group up. Oh, that's far too loud. And more of them just keep turning up. Hmm, I'm gonna have to deal with them permanently at some point. Any case, while that rest of that was happening, I went and crafted one of these, storage scanner. Now, storage scanner is something that requires power some RF tools, and if you have a look at the recipe, simple now, we've got some uh, ender pearls, redstone, and the machine frame is just some lapis gold and iron. Nothing excessive there. You are, however, going to need power, as I said. Now, we could put RF coil in there. That's uh, right, RF coil. Um, we could put um, redstone flux, whatever it's called, this stuff. Uh, oops, if I can get to it. Flux dirt. Flux duct. Yes. You could use that if you wanted to. However, since we have wireless power here, at least in a small radius, these are building up. Um, down here, I've put a flux point, which is an output from this, that system that is the input. So in here, you'll see I've all you need to do is just click on the storage scanner and uh, select what to connect to, essentially, and uh, it will start supplying power to the storage scanner. I think. Yep. Yeah. So we'll come to what the storage scanner does. 
storage scanner looks at any inventory around you up to a certain radius and it will list that inventory and you can search for it you can pull stuff into it and you can push stuff back but it's not like a typical uh well if you've used applied logistics or um the more expanse like refined storage i think it's called uh, it's not quite like that in that there is no centralized storage system for this all it's going to do is on this left hand side is all the inventories it can see depending on what you set the scan range to you just press scan so if i wanted let's say uh some blaze powder uh let's say i wanted a stack i could in fact that's click to get a full stack or shift click for single item so click i get a full stack it's in my inventory it's right here okay so it's just pulled it directly out of the chests or those storage drawers wherever they are and i can put stuff back in but unlike a centralized system it isn't going to remember where it pulled them from so this list on the left hand side here basically it goes into the the first one it can get to so you can rearrange these up and down to to store your preference and anything that you click on this rootable thing uh the star it will try and put stuff into okay so you can see down here i've got a whole list of things it can see as inventories i've rearranged pretty much the basic drawers to the top so that it will try and go into a basic drawer if it can do except for the empty basic drawers which are all the way at the bottom so it'll try and go into a drawer first and if it can't get to the drawers it will drop it into you know a couple of the small storage drawers but other than that you can just search for whatever you want and i think it's in that slot yep you can just put stuff away or just shift click stuff in and it'll go inside the system so if i and it will use some power doing this though they'll remember so if you want more uh wheat press search uh can you find any more wheat it highlights which container has the thing in it so it's not going to immediately show up but there you can see we've got wheat in that chest and it's not like in that one maybe that's a duplicate because remember chests can be joined maybe um so a small storage crate we can grab some from there from there so you can see you can easily survey your chests and get all of the actual items that you're going to use pretty cool i think now given that we've got wheat oh what's the inventory i think that must be the uh the storage scanner because it's right next door to it but it's got three slots hmm what happens if i put can i put anything in those oh yep so that's the input slot into the storage scanner system just a useful thing if you put the crafting station next door to it it does have its own crafting thing as well and you can store a few recipes not nothing like a later system but it's a first sort of first look at a centralized storage system ish and uh, by centralized i mean in the center of where all your storage is not not that it's one big container we'll get to the one big container mod soon enough so in the crafting station then what i think i'm going to do is just craft some more uh hay bales and we're going to do that because i want to upgrade our chickens or at least chicken this is just regular chicken which we don't really need to use uh, so once they get to 10 10 10 10s they're only ever going to lay more 10 10 10 eggs you'll see right down then at the moment eh, we've got seven stacks of 10 10 10 eggs for nether quartz chickens so i'm going to need to make more egg nests to start off with to hatch more and this is a miniaturized uh version i don't think there is i think it just needs hay bales so we're going to need to you know automatically gather wheat i think i'm not really wanting to stand there with the um the watering can or anything so if we're going to do that then i should go and maybe make one more and then i'm also going to look into a different mod than i think uh which mod is this one this hatchery hatchery yes there's a different mod i think it's just called roost but if we just have a look here roost only has really a few things in it one of which is a roost now a roost is a multi-container for chickens um so uh, i guess in the uk we call them chicken coops rather than roosts but uh this is certainly is a big <laughs> big container for chickens um this happens to fit 16 chickens in it apparently so that's actually a fair amount of chickens and um, they're not gonna be too happy with each other um yeah not, not inside a one meter by one meter by one meter block anyway why am i looking in chests now i can actually just look in this so it's a hard habit to break to get started with i just want some planks 
and it'll, it'll be even better once uh, I have um, uh, wireless access to this, but that's definitely applied in logistics or maybe some work around with refined storage. But I think we're going to go applied in logistics. It's a good one to start with. So uh, let's get that out of the way. One roost. So if I put that here, for instance, I need to destroy what's behind this, but let's just assume we put it uh, here. So we can import a, uh, a chicken into the roost. Now, you may wonder, well, how are you going to insert a chicken into there? Well, there's this chicken catcher or something along those kind of lines. Uh, I think that's supposed to be Pokeballs. <laughs> Holds a mob in stasis in an orb. That's two different colors. Hmm. Uh, some inspiration going on there. Is it uh, catcher? Yeah, there it is. So chicken catcher from Roost. She needs an egg, a stick, and a feather. So that will be straightforward. Let's just grab a normal egg, a stick, and a feather. And get back to our crafting group for a second. And this should convert a chicken into the Roost version of a chicken. So we are going to want to... Let me just move that out for a second. I'm going to want to pick that one up. And I'm going to pop it down. And then... There we go. We've converted it across into a roost chicken. Now the quartz chicken, 10, 10, 10. And if we just put it in here, it's importing. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means in the context of a chicken, but uh, yeah, that is going in there. Now that's not the only block that we probably want to use. I'll probably have to get rid of this. Of this. That's not the only block we want to use. That's only one of them. The other block, and uh, let's just have a look at roost. Roost. Ah, there's all the rest of the, the, the different types of chickens that you can have. Uh, the other block is the collector. So if you don't build the collector, what's going to happen is it's all going to just, all the drops are going to stay in that roost uh, block. And we want to pull them out of there. So we're going to need a chest, a hopper, and some planks, and another converted chicken. Hi. <laughs> this is just a regular chicken. So why don't we just convert you... There we go. Um, and we've got plenty of actual eggs, so we can get more of them if we want, if we really need to. Uh, what did I need? More planks, didn't I? I'd almost prefer if it would show... This is a narrow list. If it would only show the inventories that, that are actually containing the thing that I searched for, but maybe that's too much to hope for, you know, at this early stage. But uh, there's, there's a full stack of planks. And we just needed a chest and a hopper. Let's look for a hopper. Do we have any? Ah, there's some in my... Uh, <laughs> my ender patch would have given me some hoppers, so that will work fine. So there we go. Chicken, chest, and planks. A collector and of course from that collector what we probably want to do and this is a nine by nine I think from this from the square above this so that will probably be best going there then maybe um so one two three one two three four five and then it would if it's nine by nine it's centered on this then it should go four blocks every in every direction and there you see we've got some nether quartz building up and if we go over here uh, it's still, I don't know, is that, is that, in fact, hang on, is the arrow not importing? Is that just the the drops? Yeah, so this is going to stack up, obviously, and then the drops are going to pop out into these four slots. Fine, so we can just stack, stack more chickens in there. And to stack more chickens, we're going to want to just plant more nests. And let's put another one there. Just keep the gate closed, and both of these should actually mature they're not terribly fast at doing it, but that one's at 2% already, so, you know, they just happen in the background. And you can just add them into roosts as and when you have enough uh, hay bales, essentially. Yeah, so that's pretty cool with me. And this room, maybe we'll convert this over into a uh, sort of a chicken coop coop <laughs> or chicken roost roost room. Uh, so we have these nesting pens to start off with. What we should probably do is also get those other pens, not, not the other pens, the other chickens that I originally got from the uh, the nether, uh, the soul sand ones. If we want to get uh, gas tears and stuff like that farmable, 
we want um, to be able to get soul sand, because if you sieve that, you'll get gas tears. A lower amount, but we need lots of soul sand to be able to do it. So um, let's just have a look. So, well, we'll be able to find one. It's going to be in a net, isn't it? So let's have a look. Um, not you. We'll just search for the word net, so it's not always going to be accurate. New. Word did... Ah, there they are. So, nether quartz chicken, nether quartz chicken, nether quartz chicken. I picked up quite a few. Some of them were damaged, so I uh, I picked up enough of them. So there's one. That's fine. And if we put that back in its uh, in a nesting pen, it's going to start trying to hatch into this bottom one. So I'm also going to get a chest for here somewhere. Let me just uh, craft one in my inventory. I'm just going to move the um, the ones from here. We have quite a few stacks, but we should get the new... T wow, that's quite a lot of stacks. We're not going to need that many. We're only going to need one stack of those, so... Um, let me just take two stacks, and let me just take the rest of them and just throw them away. Uh, put them into our trash... Uh, whoops, not claim chunks. The trash can. And all of you can go away. They're all 10 to 10 10s, but we've got lots of nether quartz versions. So this one will naturally um, drop every so often. And every time it drops an egg, as we've done before, it gets better. So you get rid of that chicken and then put the new adult chicken back in and it just refines itself over time. And uh, that's that's pretty good. Okay, uh, are you, what have we got so far? 21 nether quartz. So that's going to fill up quite quickly. We are going to want to probably think about a centralized dump system for not really sorting but for just a large inventory system what does it take to get into applied energistics i'm going to regret this i know i'm going to regret it let me take a look so uh me chest is sort of the first one that you get to and it's just like a uh let's see i'm used to expert systems and i'm used to this being really punishing but so hopefully it's a, an easier way to get into it so uh, for those who haven't played Applied Logistics, and or why not, if not, uh, you you store everything as data. It's a digital storage system. So everything gets converted into data and back out again. So it's not trying to say that it magically stores huge amounts inside a chest. It's just sort of saying, think of it as just being annihilated, basically, and turned into just information and back again. So we have uh, the concept of crystals that you need to make um, a lot of the Applied Logistics stuff. And the usual way to start that is to actually throw them into some water and they'll grow, just not very fast. There's better ways to get into it later. So, ME terminal. Um, okay, so this looks like the regular recipes, annihilation cores. So we're going to need Fluix dust, which needs Fluix crystals. We have a way to get that through mystical agriculture on this pack. Good. And here is the thing. So drop one charge, Certus quartz and one nether quartz and redstone dust into a puddle and you get two flux crystals. So you'll notice we got this first ingredient and the second ingredient and redstone needs sort of automated dust sort of production to get there. But you can throw a stack of each of those into a puddle and then you'll get basically two stacks of um, uh, two stacks of flux crystals essentially for your three stacks input. Okay, so that's one of them. Uh, and is there anything else that I'm going to need? Uh, we're going to need the processors. And the processors come from a block called Inscribers. Now, the usual problem is that you have to go into the world and find the, the various presses. And there it is. Can be found in meteorites in Aroma 1997's dimension or crafted. Now, if we're going to craft it... Interesting. We can make it with just blocks of Invar and Certus Quartz in an induction smelter. So we don't have to go to another dimension to do it. We can do it in our own dimension, which is really cool. But if you want to go into another dimension, they are in meteorites which fall all over like an overworld dimension. And you can make a meteorite compass to find them if you want to do them that way. Uh, we can also go by mystical agriculture. And then we've got pure Certus Quartz crystals. And that's, again, another thing that you make uh, out of stuff throwing into water. Different uh, ingredients, but the same kind of thing. Okay, so it looks like what we're going to need for any of those is a few of the thermal expansion 
what is it called thermal dynamics <laughs> thermodynamics thermal dynamics these days or one of those kind of things um which is we well, need a pulverizer which you've already got one somewhere it's in probably in my sort of uh, machines chest somewhere i'm assuming it's in here but we can just grab it from from this pulverizer and we're probably going to want to add the augments and the augments are great upgrades to these machines uh, that's the wrong spelling because I'm English. Uh, it's Z, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, it's not on the quartz grindstone. It's going to pick up anything that's pulverized as well as pulverizer. So yeah, there we go. So the pulverizer is thermal expansion, but they take augments, and there's and there used to be only a few augments, but more recent versions, these are lots, lots of different kinds. So there's one that speed things up, that give you more secondary products, all kinds of different augments that we're going to get into uh, for this kind of thing. And what tends to happen is that they tend to increase the power that you need to make them work. So from that, let's get started into maybe Ender IO conduits. And let's see if uh, conduit. Let's see if I can fix that witch water spawn, that witch water thing with Ender IO conduits, because I'm not quite sure what's going on with those existing fluid ducts. And uh, it's a little easier to deal with it with fluid conduit, usually. Um, let's give this a go. So what do we need? We need a conduit binder. And there's usually a couple of different kinds of fluid conduit. Fluid conduit. This regular and pressurized. Uh, and we need vibrant alloy for them. And fused quartz, which is going to be amusing. Uh, so vibrant alloy, we're going to have to go through induction smelter again. Or casting? Well, alloy smelter will do it as well. So, yeah, we're going to have to go for the Ender IO machines as well. So we may as well get the earlier machines, which is actually not all that hard. It's probably going to want steel here. Yeah. <laughs> I knew we were going to get back to steel at some point. So furnaces are straightforward, but the induction... Uh, the, sorry, the initial machine chassis need a few different things iron bars and grains of infinity we're getting those automatically from sifting industrial dye blend Ugh. is there another recipe for that Ugh. <laughs> i have to get different colors dyes oh that's that's a chain that's a recent change okay that's annoying um is there not any other recipe where i don't have to do that hmm I guess we go for thermal expansion machines first then. So I'm going to make a, um, and I'm not going to need to do it on camera, it's a regular machine. So the uh, induction furnace. Uh, induction furnace? Induction smelter? Yep, so that's another machine that uh, I can already make. Iron glass, a tin gear, which is just tin around a stone gear, etc. We've made that before. Invar copper sand, redstone, and a bit of gold, that kind of thing. You've already seen me do that before, so one second while I build that. And actually, scratch that, we're running out of time for this episode. We're uh, running up to about half an hour. I don't want to make them too long, otherwise people may well, well be complaining about, <laughs> about the length of them. I try not to get, make them too much above half an hour. There's the occasional Station Ears episode that does that. If you're watching this episode and you aren't already signed up for the satisfactory Alpha, it may be too late, but if you do like games like this, anything to do with factories or building or complexity in building, um, go take a look at Satisfactory. Uh, it is an upcoming game that's a lot like Factorio, but it's in 3D um, with first-person camera, just like this, and Station Ears. And uh, the Alpha is coming up, and so that will be under NDA, unfortunately, so I will be able to tell you even if I was part of it, which... <laughs> just odds on, on the odds basis, I'm probably not going to be, but uh, yeah... Um, that is coming up soon, and then, uh, oh, oh, things are dying. <laughs> Do I have another star? Yeah. No, still don't have another star. So, yes, uh, what are we going to do next episode then, if, uh, if I'm not involved in any way with satisfa uh, Satisfactory? Uh, we're going to be, um, well, I'll do the roost stuff off camera. I've shown you most of that now. I think I'm going to head, yeah, I'm going to make a couple of these machines off camera. I'll make the induction smelter. That'll be straightforward. Probably make a couple of the other machines as well. I did just want to mention that, remember when I said Flux Crystals? Well, we can make them from Flux Blocks, and I got those as a reward. Now, you may not, so I'm, I'm a little bit 
careful about doing that. What I think what I may do is make the Fluix crystals in the uh, throwing them in the water, and you know, that's that's fine. <sighs> Go away. Oh no, it's gonna make that noise again. Um <laughs> I'm going to throw them in water, but then I'll have his, some I prepared earlier, and were given by the crush reward system uh, to, to be able to do everything else with. So we have those in there. There's also so there's quartz blocks. So I may well try to get us towards applied energistics as much as I can do, and then we can start crafting some kind of storage system for that. Um, but uh, we'll see how I get on. I won't do too much off camera, and then we'll start at the, first at the next episode probably with uh, some steel crafting and then some uh, some other bits and pieces towards storage system. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, seeing many different kinds of fluid cows. Uh, our mob farm is definitely working. This, again, is, is a couple of days later, but if we just go back into here now, you will see that we're up to... Well, I need to get rid of all of those. Friend of pearls. Uh, uses. Used to say in Friendeman. Randomly dropped by evolved Enderman. Okay, so we've got little bits of coal I can use in my furnace. I've got 53 drops of evil now, 43 wither skull fragments, 25 wither dust, and some necrotic bones. Necrotic bones are, are usually a kind of modifier that you get for Tinker's Construct stuff. Uh, wither dust, anything useful? I don't think so. Yeah, used by dark utils. I don't think there's anything particularly overpowered I want to jump into just yet with those. But you'll see that one right there is while it's crafting terminal two, the infinity booster card is for, uh, if I remember rightly, is for applied energistics, and that lets you access your applied energistics system from any dimension you like using a wireless crafting card or something along those lines, or a wireless terminal card or something like that. Uh, so that is very, very useful once you get to it. You essentially can just craft from anywhere at that point, and everything is good. So as I said, I hope you liked the episode. We'll carry on next episode with some more stuff and get a bit more complex, I think, with storage machines. And uh, as always, feel free to subscribe, share, like, thumbs up, etc. Click the bell, whichever you prefer to do is fine there. Or more importantly, leave comments for... Is that a bone chicken? That is a bone chicken. Um, leave comments for other, other people playing through the pack. More than, uh, more than good to see people help each other. Oh, you're a little cute bony chicken as well. Hmm. And maybe we're going to get bone meal from you. And uh, maybe I should convert you over as well. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. See you next episode. <laughs>